This episode of the Bad Crypto Podcast is brought to you by eToro. Get a $100,000 virtual currency portfolio to test your mad trading skills and find out how to get some free bad coin socks. Visit badco.in forward slash eToro for details. It's been five years since the Internal Revenue Service has issued any guidance on the tax implications of cryptocurrency. Well, the wait is over, and we're not sure it was worth the wait. Andreas Antonopoulos says that Google's quantum supremacy doesn't affect Bitcoin, and Tim Cook says that Apple won't be making a crypto like Facebook's Libra. Speaking of Libra, Mark Zuckerberg will soon be testifying before Congress on Facebook's new coin, and eToro signed a deal with the UFC. It's Fight Club for Crypto, but remember, don't talk about it. Welcome to our Bad News episode number 319 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. It's been a five years since they talked to me. Give me guidance on cryptocurrency. Hi, <laughs> Travis. Uh oh. Looks, looks like we need to add another song to the list. Uh, yep. What, what's the song? Uh, Bare Naked Ladies, right? Bare Naked Ladies, which I'm a big fan of Bare Naked Ladies. Not the band, but Bare Naked Ladies. And welcome to the Bad Crypto Podcast, the show for clothed ladies and bare naked ladies. Both That's kinds. Good. That's good. We like, we like all kinds of people, clothed and unclothed, I suppose. Well, I guess it depends how you look. Like, you know, people That's don't, you, you don't want to see me unclothed. I you don't want to see you on clothes. You know what's weird is actually just on a, as an aside, as we're getting into the show, Oklahoma passed a law this week that said that men can no longer go shirtless. <laughs> True they story. Did. No, they, they did. did not. No, swear to God, they did. They passed a law that said men cannot go shirtless, cannot mow the yard because it's not fair to women because women can't go topless. But I thought like in some states like Kansas, I thought was one of them that women can be topless in several states now. You know what? That's what they should have said. Is like, you know what? Men can go topless. Women can go topless. I'm all for that. Go for it. It's just weird. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually not for that. I think there's there should be some mystery to our you know sexuality and people walking yeah, around. It's not genitals. It's just boobs. We all have them. There is nipples. Who cares? Yeah, but people, men are turned on by them, and that's the whole. That's, that's the because point. they're hidden, and that's taboo. If they weren't, there wouldn't even be a big. We wouldn't even care. Okay, so you you want to not be turned on by boobs anymore? Is oh, that what you're I mean, boobs are great. I'm just, welcome to the Boob Crypto <laughs> Podcast. There, we got more boobs. We got, here's two boobs. Joel Travis. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're off to a great start. Well, how you guys doing? Um, gl- glad that you're here. And I don't want to say speaking of boobs and and like you know segue into anything because that's not going to make anybody look good. But speaking so of boobs, it, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not feeling well, Travis, but and you said that you weren't sure you know you were gonna be in a good mood, but you're already off to the races. Oh uh, yeah. I picked up some germs to the hospital and I'm just not feeling my number one normal self. But you know what? It's bad crypto, bad news time, so I better bring my A game, even though today my A game is probably about a B plus. Mm. Okay, well, you know who is bringing their A-game is our show sponsor, Divi. By now, certainly by now, you guys have checked out DiviProject.org. Well, here's the deal. Now you can sign up for their new mobile wallet project. And it's at uh, badcode.in forward slash Divi will take you right there. Enter your email. This is a crypto app that makes it easy to earn, transact, store your cryptos. You can have your own master nodes. I've installed two gold master nodes and they're cranking away, earning me Divi day in, day out, 24 7, nonstop. And I'm digging. My Divi. It's cool stuff. Check it out. Go to badcode.in forward slash Divi to, um, to, to hear the latest podcast we did with Nick Sapinaro from Divi. And then go to wallet.diviproject.org, enter your email, and sign up for the wallet. It's cool stuff. It's divine. 
And time stamp October the 11th in the year of 2019. 1057 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Crypto market cap, $224 billion. And looking at the top 10, Bitcoin, 83.36, Ethereum, 182, XRP, 27 cents, Bitcoin Cash, 223, Litecoin, 56, Tether, with dollar, EOS, 308, Binance Coin, 16.76, Bitcoin SV, I don't know why, but $84, and Cardano rounding out the top 10 at four centavos. Yeah, it's been a tough week for the cryptos, right? Because last one in the last seven days, or I guess the last 10 days, Bitcoin dropped below 8,000 while we were recording the last bad news. That was bad news. And in the last seven days, it's gone up about 2%. Yeah, well, it hit 85 or 8,600 briefly and has pulled back a little bit since then. I'm not exactly sure what uh, what is causing it, but we're, we're definitely in this uh, weird in-between time. And if uh, McAfee's predictions are going to come true, we better go on a run here pretty quick. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen some traders and they've done some some of their analysis and – Based on the charts, it looks like Bitcoin could dip down substantially, maybe to the $5,000 range before it kicks back up. So who knows? I'm not a trader. I'm not a financial analyst. But I mean, and you never know. It could just take off towards 15000 again. I mean, you just don't know. Well, let's kick things off with Mr. Andreas Antonopoulos. We talked recently about Google's advances in computing, and they they set up this one machine to have uh, one function, and that is basically to demonstrate quantum supremacy. And Andreas Antonopoulos has addressed this because people are scared. You know, what does this mean? Does this mean that, you know, the the Bitcoin uh, code is this where we're finally hackable? And he's like, no, zero, literally zip, bupkis, and nada effect. Yeah, but you got to kind of say it like him. What is the effect of mining in the cryptocurrency world in general? Zip, bupkis, nada. Nothing really happens. It's got a kind of Ronnie Moas voice. I was going to say, that sounded like you were channeling Ronnie. (laughs) It's like Ronnie and Andreas kind of have the same accent. So it's Moasnopolis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and Tanapomoas. Mm. So basically what he's saying is that there will have no impact at all on mining in crypto world in general. Um and he, he went on to say that any of the fears that people had were unfounded. Quote Those classes of problems are not the same classes of problems we're talking about when we talk about breaking cryptography. So I guess that we still need quantum resistance, but he's not worried about what they're doing having any effect on crypto. Yeah, and they did say that nonetheless becoming quantum resistant, at least in terms of signature algorithms, is on Bitcoin's roadmap as a necessary step. So we have to protect ourselves from, you know, these algorithms and from the encryption, you know, being able to be hacked, right? We don't want we don't want that encryption to 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 get smacked down because that would be bad and so you know cryptography if if quantum computing truly gets here then cryptography all of the hash cryptography that that's out there currently those algorithms those are going to go away those are all going to be cracked within moments is what they said so i don't know andreas antonopoulos knows a lot about the bitcoins and so hopefully that he's correct and we like Andreas. Andreas is a, is a cool Very cat. Great. I hope you bump into him. But here's somebody that we don't really like, Tim Cook from Apple. And I like I don't know the dude personally, but I always thought, why is this clown, you know, the CEO of the company? I mean, not only are you not Steve Jobs, but you're so far from Steve Jobs that you have to be a poser. I mean, you wear black, you know, shirts on stage just like Steve did. It's mm-hmm. just it's so weird. But uh, what he is. He, he, I think Johnny Ive or somebody. You know what, what's interesting is that, as you just mentioned, Apple has become so far from their innovative self that Johnny Ive was like, "I'm out," right? And so that's why we're not seeing any new real innovations. We're seeing just mediocre enhancements. We're not seeing leaps and bounds like we used to see from Apple. And oh, by the way, you know, uh, five six days ago, that was the eighth anniversary of steve jobs passing so he's been Mm. gone for eight years so far now which is crazy but the good news is there's some new emojis coming and one of them is a waffle so you know there's that innovation 
Oh my God. There's waffle yeah. innovation. That is great. But in this article right here, as you mentioned, Tim Cook on crypto, he said a private company should not be looking to gain power in the way that Facebook has done. And he doesn't think that a, a private company should set up a crypto. He, he had also dispelled any rumor that Apple might look to compete with Facebook in that market. And he believes that crypto, or excuse me, he believes that currency in general should remain at the hands of the state ran governments, which is interesting. Hmm. He can kiss my butt. That's <laughs> that's what I say to to Tim Cook. You know it, it, what a what a uh, a lackey. Yeah. Well, you know what's so interesting though is that you know China's creating their own state run cryptocurrency, and there's these these you know protests that are happening in Hong Kong, and Apple just received they're receiving a bunch of flack literally today because they pulled an app from the App Store that's allowing Hong Kong protesters to orchestrate and organize effectively and to evade, you know, the police. And there's just so many people that are kowtowing to China right now. I mean, there's this, this thing that's going on with the NBA and how, you know, all those main players in the NBA, they're all hating on Trump, but they're all kissing China's ass because they want China's money. And so mm -hmm. the NBA literally has pulled all of the Houston Rockets jerseys from their store uh, in China because they don't want to offend the Chinese government because they're trying to tap into the billions of dollars. But guess what? The Houston Rockets had Yao Ming, and Yao Ming is the biggest basketball player in the history of China. He was seven six, and you know, seven foot six, and he was a big basketball player who played for the Houston Rockets. It's just really weird how you know if, if we really look at this, and this is I don't really want to get too political on this, but really. Everybody was, oh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Really, China's the one we got to be dealing with. China's the one that's got this IP. China's the one that we got to focus on. And we got all these big celebrities and people just kissing China's ass. We got we got Tim Cook kissing China's ass. It's just crazy, all the ass kissing. Uh, ass kissing's been a big topic this week. It's been crazy. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you heard about this, but the, the NBA is not the only one in the gaming world. Oh, that, yeah, uh, you're right. Was rocked as well. So Blizzard Entertainment, you know, I've been playing their games for two decades. Some of the best games ever produced, World of Warcraft, Overwatch. Well, there's one game that's called Hearthstone. We talked about it on a previous edition when we talked to uh, the guys at Splinterlands about their digital trading card game and in hearthstone is a huge game well there is a, a pro player during his tournament he uh, issued pro you know protester sentiments well he won ten thousand dollars in prize money and and blizzard pulled it back from him they they said he's not a eligible to um to compete for a year and the two casters that were broadcasting the game got fired as well just for really? being the ones that were on well there is a huge backlash mm -hmm. against blizzard and you know it's it's really it's so much more nuanced than you know black and white uh, and look i'm totally with you know the the protesters free hong kong free the world damn it you know screw communism and socialism um let people do yeah, what they you know, want to do I, I, yeah, I heard this, or I thought this was a really good sentiment that someone had. It says, you know what? There's a lot, there's there's this growing sort of request by people in America who kind of want communism and kind of want socialism. How about we take all of them and we trade China? We say, hey, look, give us your democratic protesters and we'll give you these communist lovers and we'll just call it even. Oh, I think that's good. <laughs> I'm down with that. Yeah. They'll be I mean, seriously, for their come on. Yeah. yeah. Communism, people got, oh, communism, communism. Like, it's just the craziest thing ever because, for one, you know, history speaking, it's never worked. It's actually caused the most genocide of anything ever, right? Like more. No, it's millions. just it's just not been done right, Travis. Ever. Well, you know, but, but maybe you know. that's maybe that's maybe that's just the case. It's just it's just so weird to me. You know what? I do agree. I think the problem is not capitalism versus communism. The problem is crony capitalism. And if we could get rid of crony capitalism, there'd be a lot more. It'd be a lot more fair. I mean, I get. I just. It just. I do think there needs to be some sort. I mean, I'm here in Italy right now. There needs to be. There's socialized medicine in here. Like people get sick and they can go to the hospital and do what they need to do. There's no cost to them and whatever. There's a lot of that stuff that's great. There's great. But people, somebody's got to pay the cost for it. Somebody's got to pay for it. And when you get into socialism or communism, it just always creates way, way bad crony capitalism. Crony. 
you know, to the to the nth degree where you have this monopoly of these government. People bitch about the government having too much control now, but then you want them to have all of the control. <laughs> it's just it's just insane to me. And so here here we have these NBA guys that are literally saying nothing. And there's you know here they are. They're calling Trump. Trump's a racist, and Trump is there. Oh, he's got co- he's got concentration camps. Hey, look. They're, they're the, commun- the Chinese are actual dictator, and they actually have communists, and they are actual racist, but they're not saying anything about them, which is just drives me crazy. I mean, come on, people, get get your head out of your ass. Tell, tell me how you really think, Travis. I'm not, I'm not in a good mood right now. You can uh, tell. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just pissed off two people and got three new uh, bad reviews, probably after this. Somebody, yeah, but, but we also we also people. picked up. A few new subscribers because they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we love all you guys. You know what? It, it's uh, opinions other than your own are OK. That's what you know. For, this is how we learn and how we discover is by talking about things. Mm-hmm. And if you can't handle so the fact that somebody has an opinion that might be different than yours, it's time to grow up. Like, let's be adults here and be able to talk about real world stuff without crying for our mommies. Dude, that's where you grow. Like, you know what? I mean, if we all have the same opinion, then we're just a duplicate copy of everybody else and have the same exact views as someone else has. You know what? You learn. I mean, that's one thing I think that, you know, some people get all pissed off about politics and whatnot. But like, you know what? I've had the opportunity. I feel very blessed. I've been to nearly 50 countries now, and I've met so many great people all over the world. And you know what? We're all basically really the same. We all just, we want to have, we want to be happy. We want to have, we want to be healthy. We want our family to be healthy. We want people, you know, it's like, we're all inherently the same, but you know what? It's okay to have different points of view because you know what? If we didn't, Jesus, it would be so boring. We would all be the same walking around like sheep and bad. We all- we- we no. would all be the same, walking around like sheep, going bat. No, oh, I'm oh. sorry. I was I was just illustrating. You have such a great point of view. I really sameness, sameness. Mr. Travis Wright for president. Yeah. No. Then we can make fun of your skin color. That's true. Because that's what happens when you. I, you call me orange. I'm not orange. I'm peach. You're more chartreuse. I think. No, I, I like that. I'm peach. Oh, I'm Pete. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the crypto news now that we had that little diversion. Did and- you know what, Aaron, if you want to edit all that out, feel free. I'm producer. <laughs> no, no, I say leave it in. It is what it is. And so there is some rumblings at Facebook's Libra Association because PayPal has gone. They said, we're out of here. They are the first member to exit the Libra Association. The U.S. payment processing company said it would no longer participate in the group, would focus on its own business instead. Quote, we remain supportive of Libra's aspirations and look forward to continue dialogue on ways to work together in the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's there's regulatory issues, and I think there's pressure that's going on that's, that's hitting some of these com- companies. And I think that maybe the strategy that Facebook had in releasing this, I think they blew their load too quickly. If they would have just came out and said, pow, here's, here's Libra, you know, what would have Steve Jobs done? Steve Jobs is not going to tell you, oh, guess what? Six months from now, we're going to create this thing called an iPhone. It's going to be great. No. Here's our iPhone, and here it is, right? And so I think that they blew their load a little too soon on this. And now people are, especially people in the regulation space, they're questioning it. PayPal says, nope. I know that Visa and MasterCard are not as, you know, optimistic about it as well. They have, they're, they you know, considering, reconsidering their involvement in Libra because they don't want to attract regulatory scrutiny. And, uh, you know, so... You know, they have 28 members in your association, uh, and, you know, it looks as if that some of these people are going to start pulling out, and that's not good news for, for Facebook and Libra, but it might be good overall, but we'll see. Who knows? I'd know. like to see a full list. This article says that Uber, Lyft, and Spotify are amongst those, but you're right. They're facing the, these agent, these organizations are facing pressure. They're under pressure. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 well, do, the- do. The, the Calibra. I got to add that to the list. That, that, okay, that, go ahead. And add by the by, list. by the way, I don't know if you've ever heard. You know that song. First of all, is amazing, right? Um, Under pressure, David Bowie and Freddie Mercury 
saying on that. If you go to YouTube and search for Under Pressure with just the vocals, the music stripped away, and Freddie Mercury's voice is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. you'll, You'll be mesmerized listening to him and Bowie sing the song without the music track behind it. Mm, that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so Vanilla you'll... Ice came along and 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 sampled, you know. No, no, he goes, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not the same as Under Pressure because we go do 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 do. <laughs> like no, they're just the same. Oh no, it's different. No, okay, whatever. No, but if you want to find out that whole list of who is part of Calibra, you can go to C A L I B R A. It's Calibra <laughs> dot com. And uh, speaking of. That ties it all together from early on. We were talking about nipples, calibra.com. <laughs> and one more uh, little tie-in right here. I was going through my um, my Twitter account yesterday and seeing who was following me, and Vanilla Ice is following me now. <laughs> oh, that's <so> great. <laughs> me and 53,000 others, but mm-hmm. he, he's, you know, Ice, Ice Baby. That's so great. My favorite, my favorite one to follow me is the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> and the Beastie Boys, Beastie Boys follow me, and so does Barack Obama. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. That's that's nice. So here's the big news from our our headline for today, and this is we've been waiting on the U.S. Internal Revenue Service, otherwise known as the IRS, to provide guidance for calculating taxes on crypto holdings, and for the first time. In five years, because it's been through 2014, the IRS has issued guidance on this, and they're telling us this is how they are treating. Um, But this particular um, guidance only addressed one thing, and that is forks. Mm. Mm -hmm. I I have nothing against forks. forks. I I normally eat with forks. No problem with them. Yep, nothing about spoons, nothing about knives, forks so only. Bad. But what about what about chopsticks? This is so this is so I don't know, I'm so upset. So here's what the document says. If your cryptocurrency went through a hard fork, but you did not receive any new cryptocurrency, whether through an airdrop or some other kind of transfer, you don't have taxable income. So what they're saying is you you have taxable income if you have control over the forked coins and can spend them mm-hmm. so so if you uh, i don't know you know what does control mean here i guess receipt is defined by dominion and control so it's the ability to transfer sell exchange or dispose of some of the assets so does that mean if somebody sends you an airdrop that you're responsible or not yeah well one thing that i want to say is like jameson lop who we've had on the show who i'd love to maybe have on again he's a great dude he, yeah, he sent a tweet out about this whenever the news dropped, and he said, today's IRS guidance is a hot mess. What if you have keys but no software from which to spend the asset? What if you never sell or transfer the asset and it drops 90% in value? What's the value if the asset isn't even trading at the time of the fork, right? Mm. So there's so many questions on this. It's, you know, from what I've done in the, in the reading that I've done, it's almost like it was just, it was kind of half-assed. Like, it's like they've not thought everything through. And that's a challenge. And they've had five years to try to get it right. And it doesn't seem to me like they're getting it right. Are, are you saying a government agency is doing something half assed? That you know I don't, what? that doesn't make sense. Well, then you know what? It does make sense. So let's give them, let's give the government rights to every single aspect of our industries and all of our government. Let's just do that. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we've already had that conversation. Never mind. Well, speaking of government, our next story from Yahoo Finance deals with a different part of the the government the cftc the commodity futures trading commission says that ether is a commodity and that ether futures are next but then they also they also call bitcoin a commodity so this is the first time that they've said something about ether is that ethereum is a commodity as well so does that mean that every token built on ethereum is also a commodity you know what i would agree i think you know, it's Bitcoin is not a security. Ethereum is not a security. I would say that it's probably closest to a commodity. Now, I'm, I'm again, not a financial advisor, as we've said thousands of times in the show. But, I mean, the way that commodities tend to work, Bitcoin sort of seems to fall in line with what a commodity is. I mean, when you're, when you're you know, 
you're trying to buy corn or you're buying any of these other vegetables or soy and just the price of them, they go up and they go down depending on certain things. And it see, it seems like Bitcoin might actually be a commodity. Now, not all cryptos are. A lot of cryptos probably are securities. Some of them are maybe not. They're, they're, they're just they're, they're, uh, utilities, but very few of them are actually utilities. It's interesting to sort of see this. And, and we, we do have a new a chairman of the CFTC because Giancarlo, we have a new guy whose name is Keith Tarbert. And I ha- we have some connections within the CFTC that we met when we were at consensus and hopefully we can get one of these guys on the show to maybe talk about some of this stuff because this is new them coming out and saying that it is a commodity is interesting so um should be should be wild to see how we want to have a conversation with them however you know there's so many so many layers of stuff to try to get somebody on from the cftc they have to have so much approval and questions ahead of time and la 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 but we'll try to we'll try to get somebody on to clarify this I think that's a good idea. So if anybody's out there that can speak with authority on this um, or knows somebody that would be willing to come on, then write us, badcryptopodcast at gmail.com. I uh, can't Tim, speak with authority, but I can speak loudly. Yes, you can. Uh, Tim Draper, back in the news again, you know, truly one of the, the modern day prophets of crypto, right? He's just, he's so well respected. And just such a nice guy. He's such a he's a nice boy. Uh, so Tim, in this article on Coin Telegraph, is saying that the new dot crypto domain is going to replace wallet addresses. Now, Travis, back on episode number two sixty four of the show, we spoke with Brad Cam of Unstoppable Domains. At that time, they just had the dot zill domain for Zilliqua, but they are they are now launching the dot crypto domain as well and and draper says this is going to you know you'll have your own wallet so uh whatever dot crypto would be your wallet yeah they didn't even have the dot crypto then i mean i remember was chatting about it and going well how cool would it be to have dot crypto and they were probably already had it in the works but i remember asking them about it they didn't have it in the works then but they said that's something that they could potentially do and now they have it so that's great so hopefully we can be bad dot crypto that would be awesome you built that, Travis. Mm-hmm. I built it. I did. I did it myself. You built it with your mind. Thank you. I'm so good. I got no profits from it, though. That's I'm pretty impressed with that. So, but think about how, how cool that would be, right? If you had, um, you know, Travis, yeah. right? Dot crypto or whatever, right? Joel dot crypto. Wallet. Send me some crypto. Joel, Joel com dot crypto. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, boom. Here you go. And it's really, it's just a redirect is all it is, right? It's not like you can hack the domain itself. Now, if somebody was able to steal your domain, right, like hack your Mm -hmm. DNS server or something like that, then maybe that could end up going that, you know, that would be the future of hacking. That would suck. That would suck. Coming from somebody who has lost cryptos before, I know that, that that brings sadness to you. Yeah, and I know that every time you've lost crypto, you just call up the company and beg at them and they send you more. It's great. I don't know how the fuck that works. It only work happened, for me. It happened one, <laughs> one time. One time I did have a major screw up. Um, and uh, yeah, and it was fixed. Amazingly. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Hey, Travis, do you shop at Ikea? Do you ever go there and put, you know, buy stuff to put together? Dude, you see my new, my new office with my studio there. I have two of those big, Calix shelves, K A L L A X. They're like five shelves by five. So I got 25 little squares. Each square is like 12 inches. Uh, put that thing together. You know, my whole house, my whole new, my whole new, uh, condo really has a lot of stuff from IKEA in it. Yeah. Mm. Well, this is why this is interesting, IKEA. So a local retailer that was dealing with IKEA in Iceland wanted to settle an invoice uh, that they owed IKEA by paying them via ethereum and ikea said okay Mm. and i I think you wrote this article because it says they were accepting payment in blockchainified digital cash that's like that was you i I did but i did not write this article it was david canellis of uh, the next web maybe he's a listener of bad crypto because he's blockchainification is your total you've trademarked that that should i do i need to sue you might want to sue dave and be like uh Uh, I wouldn't do that. I do love Iceland, though. I got to go to Iceland for the first time this year, and what a beautiful, beautiful country, but expensive, like mm-hmm. silly, stupid expensive. Like, isn't it like a whole other world? 
Like, doesn't it look like the terrain is stuff you've never seen anywhere? Like parts of it, it looks like, yeah, it looks like Mars. I don't know which parts you went to because I think you went to a different area than I did. But I, whenever I went, I went to Reykjavik and then I went to the West Coast and drove down the West Coast. And oh my goodness, there was places that like where there was like this black lava and then it was like jaggedy mm-hmm. black lava and then it had green moss on top of it. So there was mm-hmm. just like this jaggedy, it was just so crazy. And then there was this, the black sand beach of like, Rajnikis or something I don't even remember the name of it but there's this black sand beach that have the biggest waves you've ever seen and like the waves are so big at this beach like you can't stand 120 you need to be 150 feet away from the shoreline because those waves come crashing in and pull people out into the undertow like regularly like it just Yikes. kills so many people but it's so beautiful and the sunset there was just so amazing and I was just in awe and I didn't see the sign <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. until afterwards, after this big wave crashed in front of me, and I'm turned around, I'm running away from it. And uh, wow, yeah, it was so beautiful. I love Iceland. I don't love the cost of Iceland, but uh, actually the cost to fly to Iceland is very low these days. It's like I can fly round trip from Kansas City to Iceland for like 500 bucks. We we went to a restaurant there near one of their hot springs you know, baths that they had and uh, the restaurant had great reviews and went there. It's basically a restaurant attached to a barn and you could look through the windows of the barn and the cows are in there, you know, the cows that are creating the milk. And, and I, I don't think they're actually slaughtering those particular cows, but I had a hamburger and I'm like looking over my shoulder at the cow. I'm like, was this your cousin? Anybody, you, <laughs> any, anybody, you know, this is delicious brother. Mm. Yeah. Iceland is great. And uh, if anybody wants to put on a crypto event there, I know we'd be, you know, totally uh, could be persuaded to come back again. I will go to Iceland multiple times more in my life because I've uh, I feel like I've only sort of cracked the the, 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 the very beginning stages of what I could see there because I only hit about 15 percent on the West Coast. But dude, there's like all these glaciers you can go like uh, snowmobiling on and like these huge ice tunnels and just so many amazing things that I've yet to see in Iceland. Cause I only had, I was only there for like four or five days, but uh, I definitely want to go back. I'd like to see the Northern lights, but of course I was there in the summer where you have, you know, 20 hours of daylight. So there's no Northern lights. It's so freaky, you know, that it's midnight and it's still a little light outside. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, OK, so let's hop over just a little southeast of there on the European continent to Spain. Apparently in Madrid, there has been a partnership between the Spanish bank Santander and blockchain certification startup Votun. They're going to allow uh, the city transport users to pay for transit using a single unified digital payment system powered by blockchain. I wonder how many initiatives like this are happening all over the world that are in process. Like how much is happening with blockchain that mm-hmm. we don't know about? Yeah. Well, actually, I had a I uh, was participating as a presenter on an IBM blockchain webinar this week, and we were talking about a lot of the different initiatives that's going on. And you know, IBM is doing a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff with a lot of different types of industries and a lot of different companies and one of which is a the music industry well there's a company called access point which has been in the music industry sort of forever and um, they actually were working with david bowie originally with david bowie when he was talking about how the internet was one of the most amazing things and potentially scary things and they were working with him to find ways to sort of digitize music and stuff before he had passed away and then they've they've been working now doing stuff in the music industry for about 20 years since then. And they were talking about their solutions. Very similar to music economy that we had on very early on in 2017. And um, there's there's some big companies out there that are taking blockchain and doing some really cool stuff with it. So there's a lot of industries. And Gartner just came out with their hype cycle uh, report on this. And it, it's just amazing to see all the different areas that blockchain is and let me just let me just spout off some of these for you because it's just it's completely interesting when you think about all the different areas that is loyalty and rewards autonomous organizations regulations life sciences society stable coins education customer service retail advertising healthcare 3d printing 
you know, IOT, gaming, ACH payments, government, smart ass assets, um, oil and gas, supply chain. There's just so many areas that blockchain is impacting the world. Blockchain is eating the world right now. And most people are blissfully unaware because they just think it has to do with Bitcoin. Mm, that sounds like a good name for a band, Blockchain Eat World. Mm, okay. Because Jimmy, like, Jimmy, Jimmy's full. Blockchain so no. Ate Jimmy. <laughs> By the way, that was the second Bowie reference in one show. Mm. Bowie's right. in space. Mm -hmm. You know, the Madrid in motion is what they're calling this thing, and they're not the only ones. Apparently, the Argentinian state public transport card, SUB, announced a partnership with Bitex so that people could pay for services using Bitcoin. And a city in Brazil called Fortaleza has mm -hmm. jumped on the blockchain bandwagon, allows commuters to pay for bus tickets by Bitcoin alongside conventional card payments. So, uh, yeah, blockchain's dead. Bitcoin's dead. It's all going away. Never mind. Hey, uh, I just want to I just want to point out that you missed the reference there. You missed the song reference. I didn't miss it. Bowie's in space. It was yeah, uh, boom. Fly, Fly, to the Fly to the Concords. Add that to the list. Uh. I think I think we should just add the entire Fly to the Concords nope. you know, playlist. Little. Stop because because uh, eventually we're going to hit every single one of them. Well, I am the hippopotamus. My lyrics are bottomless. Oh, my gosh. There, there, it, <laughs> there it is right there. Yeah, All right, yeah. moving along uh, to the uh, the basketball realm. Ah, back to the NBA again, Mr. Travis Wright. Mm. The uh, Sacramento Kings have announced a partnership with Block Party to bring an NBA first reward program using blockchain tech. So they're going to track fan engagements and you'll accumulate points in your virtual wallet. And then I guess you'll be able to get rewards based on the points that you earn. Dude, sports and rewards and loyalty are going to be so huge when it comes to crypto and blockchain. Like it just, it just makes so much sense. Like you interact, you, you buy season tickets and you earn this crypto and you earn these points. It's like this sort of like points, but it's going to be crypto. And then you're going to be able to trade that crypto easily. You, you know what? I could send it to a friend and maybe, maybe what happens is, is I want to do a video. Uh, I, I get to jump on a video call with Patrick Mahomes of the chiefs. Right. And I, but I got to have, 10,000 Chiefs coins, right, to do that. But while I am a you know, I am a season ticket holder and I can earn points for that and anytime I buy stuff at the concessions or anytime I pay for the ridiculously overpriced parking, $60 to park at Arrowhead, totally ridiculous and unnecessary, but uh, you know, I can add I can earn loyalty points for that and then and I can do cool stuff because I've earned so many. That stuff's coming, man. That's going to be awesome. Well, Trav, let's talk about the Zuck one more time because the dude, he's not going away, right? He's hes a powerful man because of how many people use Facebook, mm -hmm. and he is being called before U.S. Congress once again to testify and to talk about Libra. Yep. And so he's projected later this month, he says on the 23rd of October, uh, Zuckerberg will be uh, chatting with Congress. They're doing an examination of Facebook and its impact on the financial services and housing sectors. Uh, Zuckerberg will be the only witness. And I'm just so excited to see how he drinks water this time. Yeah. Uh, you know, like these, these people, how many of them actually are going to have the right questions to even ask? None. They're not. I mean, I don't know if you saw last time. You know, when when Zuckerberg was was sitting in Congress and they were asking him the dumbest questions about basic Internet that everybody right. should know. And he would just like look at him and, you know, in his mind, he's going, good Lord, these guys are dumb. As shit. And he's going, um, yeah, Facebook makes money from advertising. And they're like, yeah. oh, OK, wow, I didn't know that. Wow. So do they. So so here they are going to be asking questions about crypto, knowing that crony capitalism goes on on both sides of the thing. Right. It's like. You know, I, I'm actually I lean liberal, which is crazy to most people. They, they hear me talk. I just love freedom. I I love fairness and I love freedom. And I think there's corruption on both sides of the fence. And I don't give anybody a break. Whenever Bush was in office, I busted his balls. Whenever Obama's in office, I bust. When I busted Clinton's balls, I bust Trump's balls too. I don't care. I want fairness and I want freedom. And you know, it, it's really interesting when you see some of these people who have been in Congress. You, we, we say drain the swamp. They're swamp creatures. They've been in there forever, and they've not only have they made so much money, 
but then their children have made so much money because they put them in, they basically do things like, oh, here you go, country, here's $100 million in aid. And then all of a sudden, like one of their children gets a job at a, as, at, for something they don't even know what they're doing, and they get a big fat job of making ridiculous amounts of money. That stuff happens all the time, and it's so corrupt and it's so crazy because they give the they go, here's our taxpayers' money, giving them to another country, and then the country does their things, and then oh, the politicians get their kickbacks. You know what? It's on both sides of the fence. I don't care who you are, or what you think about politics, or what side of the how way you lean when you walk. It's ridiculous. And and especially ridiculous is this going to be this thing on October twenty third? Because if I, I think like I'm looking forward to the mashups of the questions that people ask and the answers because uh, it's going to be a show. I'm looking forward to the mashed potatoes because now I'm hungry. You said yeah. mash up, and I got I just thought food. Or I thought you got you, you were hungry because I said <laughs> <laughs> you want a sandwich. Well, no. just wait till October twenty third. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwiches out there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'll tell you who's got to eat one now and doesn't have to wait. It's a former interpreter for the U.S. military who has been sentenced to 30 years in jail for dealing fentanyl. He paid for drugs with uh, cryptos and, mm-hmm. and sold them. He sold them for cryptos, is what he did. Oh, that's right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Paid with cryptos. You know, yeah, this is another thing. This has been very, this is more of a political show than we've chatted with about a long time. But, uh, the Trump administration actually forced the Chinese to sell their the port in Long Beach. And so the Long Beach port has been ran by China for the past 30 years. And that's the port where all that fentanyl is coming in. So uh, the administration has forced that Chinese company to sell that port. It did not make the news because it's not one of the narratives that they like to talk about. They don't ever like to showcase when somebody does anything good, whenever they don't, they don't like, like that sort of political thing. But Big news, man, because a lot of the, the, so much fentanyl is coming in. It's 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 killing thousands of people. I, I read that in last year it killed upwards of thirty thousand people, uh, and this year it's on trend to hit, kill forty thousand people. And when you dive into it and you see it, like like some of the people in the Chinese military are sort of looking at this as a subversive sort of a war, a way to impact America through importing these horrible drugs, meth. And fentanyl, the same thing's happening in Australia. A lot of meth is coming in. Once the Chinese bought this port, boom, it opened up a whole bunch of problems uh, in in uh, Australia that had all kinds of new fentanyl and meth and stuff. So it's like they import these drugs to sort of subvert the people in some way, and it's killing thousands and thousands of people, and it's no good. And it's destroying communities. It's very bad. Don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. Trav, do you ever watch uh, UFC? I have watched it a couple times. I don't watch it all that much. I mean, I, I was a big fan of boxing back in the day when Mike Tyson was out there fighting a lot. I really enjoy watching Mike Tyson beat people with their teeth, but I, I don't like USC as much. <laughs> Not USC. That's University of Southern I don't California. like USC. I don't like UCLA. I don't like them. <laughs> well, apparently our sponsor, eToro, has entered a six-month partnership with the UFC, um, and they're kicking it off in Australia in New Zealand. Down under, mate, there's a big fight with some guy named Whitaker versus some guy named Adesanya. That's going to happen in uh, in Melbourne, or maybe it just happened. I don't know. This might have this might have just happened, actually. But uh, interesting partnership, right? That that they're using um, mainstream type stuff to introduce crypto to the masses. You know what? I love the UFC now. This is great. E-Toro. Yeah, I dig it too. I also like our sponsor, eToro, and yeah. we're we're grateful for them. And if you guys haven't signed up by now, what are you waiting for? By the way, I'm speaking to there's several dozen of you, okay, who have opened an eToro account either in the US or internationally somewhere, and many of you have uh deposited some money, but you haven't opened a position. If you don't open a position, with at least $50 of your dirty fiat into one of the cryptos on the platform, you can't get your bed coin socks. You can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat. Mm, we should add that list to the list now. That's Another great. brick in the wall? Yeah. Little great stuff. Floyd. Little yeah. Floyd action. Is that so, right now? Hey, listen, you heard, tap, 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 tap. You just added it. Very good. 
Yeah, they have. Etoro is actually launched in the U.S. We've been telling you about this. They have some very cool trading tools. The fact that you can connect with the best traders around the world, and you're going to be able to start copying their trades, which is very cool. And as Mr. Joel Kahn mentioned, we have socks, but we don't have a whole lot of socks left. They're running low. Uh, Badco.in forward slash Etoro. And what you need to do, and if you've not done this or you've set up the account like Joel was just saying. You need to go in, you need to make your first deposit uh, with, of at least 50 bucks. Then you need to take that 50 bucks and buy some cryptos with it. And boom, that's what triggers the socks. So we're not trying to trigger you, but we are trying to get you to trigger that so those socks become activated. And speaking of eToro, an upcoming episode, in fact, I believe our next episode is going to feature a senior market analyst at eToro, Mati Greenspan. And we had a fascinating discussion with him, so you're going to want to make sure and be ready for that oh, next great. episode. He's great. He's out. very insightful, and he's pretty funny. Considering that we chatted with him at like midnight and his kid was crying and he was having some challenges, but he's great. I mean, you guys are going to love him. He's got a great personality and uh, very insightful. Mm -hmm. And you too out there, you guys have great personalities. We know because it takes a great personality to listen to the show, to be a citizen, a card carrying member of the Republic of Bad Cryptopia. We hereby stamp your passports. That's true. Because we've scared away all the people who don't want to be part of Bad Cryptopia with our opinions sometimes. Well, it takes it, there's a certain taste, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be part of this community. You know who you are. We know who you are. And we hope to see some of you in Las Vegas for Vegas Blockchain Week at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be great. We used to like you until you said something I didn't like, and then I hate you. You hurt uh, my feelings. I'm going to go know. write you a bad review. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Dude, World Creepercon is going to be awesome. Vegas Blockchain Week is going to be off the chain, off the hook, off the blockchain. On on this, I don't even know. There's lots of things you kids are saying these days. Off the hizzy, for rizzy. But, um, yeah, great. Don't we have a ticket? Don't we have a way to give them some tickets to deal? Uh, if you go to badco.in forward slash WCC, you can still get a $100 discount on any of the tickets that are offered, whether for the um, just the World Crypticon event or the entire Vegas Blockchain Week. Badco.in forward slash WCC. We are going to have a meetup. While we're there, we haven't scheduled it yet, Mr. Travis Wright, but we need to do that. And uh, it'll just be for bad cryptopians. Only for bad cryptopians and anybody who is topless. <laughs> There's a lot by. of that. It's Vegas, dude. <laughs> they can come by. It's totally good. I mean, you can be either bad cryptopia or topless and you can come. Well, there you go. And if you do come topless, then I would say you learn the secrets to stay bad. The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.